is phenomenal. Um, I think that the reality of that richness makes us take, the, makes the politicians take Caribbean genius for granted that they don't need money, they do well without it, right? And that's the attitude. Of course, we inherited that from the beautiful British who all, talk, all think of writers as people who have a hobby. <coughs> Still think like that. Um, so the proportion of output of genius, of talent, in the Caribbean is extremely high. Um, and if you took every craft, as we're talking about, whether it's the wire bender in Trinidad, you see, I don't, one of the things I try to resist is patriotism, right? I don't want to sound over-enthusiastic, a boy, if you see what we could do in Trinidad, you know, I don't want to do that. But it is real, it is a reality. It is that I've had actors perform who have been reviewed in foreign places, and it isn't that, you know, oh, you're getting applause because when you went to New York, they liked you and so on. But it is true, it is true that some of the best dancers in those companies in New York um, have been Caribbean dancers, etc., etc. But these people did this on their own, you know? And I think if the arts were endorsed, endorsed it would be even more phenomenal because at least the training and appreciation would be there. So at 80 now, I just feel very frustrated um, and betrayed by what has happened in the Caribbean about the development of the arts. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, Mr. Walcott, uh, I got a question for you with Jim Monkey Mountain. Yeah. Um, in the book, when Macaque is in prison and he talks about um, the loveliest thing I see on this earth, like the moon walking along her own road. Upon our English 120, we recognize that the moon is the white woman. And on the next page, we see how the corporal and the judges and Tigre and Cirrus, they all mock Macaque by saying that he sees this apparition of this white moon or the white woman. And the corporal says, my lord, is this rage for whiteness that does drive niggas mad? Now, do you believe that there is still a rage for whiteness among black women and men? Because you spoke tonight saying that um, back then, that black men, black women were inferior to the white women. I think the remnants of slavery mentally are very, very hard to eradicate. Um, Self-contempt is very hard to eradicate in a culture. But we are doing it, and it has happened. It is happening. It's happening with our children. Um, but remember that in Dream of Monkey Mountain, if somebody sees the moon as a white woman, that's their vision of the moon. The moon doesn't claim to be a white woman. <laughs> While she's waiting for the microphone over here. Oh, okay, there's an assembly, yeah. Good evening, Mr. Walker. It would seem, for the most part, that Caribbean writers in the diaspora have an advantage in terms of publishing and recognition over writers who are writing from home. My question is, what hope is there for writers who may want to write from the Caribbean and possibly those other third world countries where, as you have said earlier, we are already battling with poverty and all of that, and then we're thinking in terms of money for publishing and all of that. It's kind of frustrating. What hope is there for writers who want to no, write from I the Caribbean? I'm sorry to interrupt you because I disagree so furiously. I don't agree. I think that the quality that we're talking about is when these people wrote, whether it's my Paul or Laming or Selvan, and were writing, the level of achievement that they were aiming for was not con find a parochial experience of, say, writing for Barbados or for Trinidad, or even writing for London. <coughs> they were writing for uh, a level as high as possible in English literature because they were writing in English. <coughs> um, the danger of what you're saying is a kind of a sulk that may say, oh, look, at, um, they are abroad and they're getting published by English or American publishers. They get published because of the quality of their work, not because they're there. And now, publishers will take 
quality work from anywhere, um, you know, however remote, maybe even more, you know, exotically print stuff from remote places. So I don't think it's a good argument to argue that um, there's a difference between the parochial and the cultural, civilized, distant publishers. That's a dangerous way of thinking. I think um, whenever the writers emerged, it was that their quality was recognized early by certain systems, by say, by Henry Swansea and, the, and you know, Caribbean Voices, or by somebody else, by good editors <laughs> or good publishers. So it would be dangerous to encourage, say, a Bahamian young writer or a St. Lucian um, to feel that they are neglected because they are writing about St. Lucia or writing about the Bahamas and nobody cares. People care about quality. That's what publishers are interested in, first of all, the quality of the work that they're wanting to publish and the hope that they can sell it. But they only can sell it if the quality is there. <clears throat> well, uh, Mr. Walker. Thank you very much. I'm sorry about my erratic reading. Sorry. All right, we just want to thank you very much. Um, I think we're going to have some more. I, I, Professor Higgins will now take over. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you, Mr. Walcott and Dr. Strawn. Dr. Helen McPhee, the Writing Program Coordinator, will now present the Student Award for the Derek Walcott Essay Competition. Dr. McPhee. Good evening. I would like to invite Mr. Walcott to make the presentation. With the entry entitled, History and Transcendence, the West Indian Timeline in Tijan and His Brothers. The winner of the essay competition is Miss Anna Alicia Burroughs. Thank you, Dr. McPhee, and congratulations again, Anna Alicia. She's one of our BA majors in English. And now, uh, Ms. Shaniqua Higgs will come with the vote of thanks. On behalf of the College of the Bahamas and the School of English Studies, I would like to thank our distinguished speaker, Mr. Derek Walcott, for allowing us this time to intimately experience his life and his work. I must also acknowledge the hard work of faculty members in SES, especially those that served on the Anatole Rogers Memorial Lecture Committee. Your hard work was demonstrated here tonight. And now, Mr. Walcott, on behalf of School of English Studies, I would like to present you with a sampling of literature and art inspired by the islands of the Bahamas. I hope that it brings you many hours of enjoyment and inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> 